Salutations, everyone, and welcome back to, do you know, The Lessons of Europe. We're led by Francisco Franco and not Salazar, but broadcasting the debates. A question has remained ever-present throughout this whole process. It teeters on every meeting and talk that's so far been held. Precisely what is democracy and what it should entail? Well, certain liberal adherents believe it entails one key feature. The people in their input, in order to envision truly democratic refor reformation process, it's been recommended that the founder debate should be broadcast to the whole public to show transparency and a genuine commitment to democracy. All in Iberia would be the rich or poor, Spanish or Portuguese, conservative or liberal will be able to watch the most important debates in a matter of their opinion towards the results. This huge spectacle could have drastic ramifications while well, making sure the government has faith in its people and shows an attempt to make a connection with them. It could also cost us very dearly. Should the debates go smoothly, we have little to worry about, but if they end in disaster, then God knows what the consequences will be from the public. <clears throat> Instability is already too high, and this is my push I'd be over the edge. We could keep the base behind closed doors and a precaution, but this may also give off signals or signs or true feelings for this whole process. Broadcast them. No excessive publicity or input is needed. Broadcast them. A technocrat triumph. With Opus Dye's involvement in the process, the dynamics of Iberian political society have clearly changed. Socioeconomic liberalism has been seemingly given the all clear. Now the floodgates are open for the arrest of the Opus Dye's proposals. The decision taken to Opus Dye and their opinions has caused no shortage of hoo ha among the more conservative sections of Iberian political society. This matters little, though, for the process requires a means of all qualified voices in Iberia. The Opus Dye are to be welcomed on board and bring a hopefully healthy element to the Congress. The Opus Dye have been, of course, nothing but grateful of the opportunity provided to them by the Iberian government. This gratefulness has been showcased by their entrenchment of support for not only the process, but also the government as well. Technocrats will have to prove their usefulness as a Congress. will soon evolve into the most crucial stages. In any case, there's hope that the technocratic expressors will bring something new and fresh to the table. The fresh thinking of technocracy will bring Iberia back from the brink in the military. One of the most important aspects of a, uh, Iberian political society is, of course, the military. With important connections to the regime via Generalissimo Franco and the direct role in the civil war, the military make up a critical part of the ruling regime. With this in mind, influential members of the military have wished to have a prominent role in the current process. Of course, it is likely that they wish to shape the discourse to make sure the military's power remains absolute, yet they also make up an integral part of a movement. Their ambivalence of the civilian government is well known, but attention must be given to these men. They are very much a powerful force whose, whose, whose needs will be need to be placated or there could be untold consequences. Iberians eagerly wait for the final debates. For the first time in what seemed like centuries, posters and leaflets were seen throughout Iberia that was not just full just propaganda or pro-regime material. It was a call-out, a mass marketing campaign unlike anything seen in Iberia before. Walls, lampposts, and shops all had them on display. It was a message to the whole uh, of Iberia. That perhaps the most important event in its history was about to take place. People first whispered about it somewhat in disbelief, and then they began to shout about it. For the Iberian Congress was about to broadcast its final debates to the entire nation for all the public to see. To those born in the Caudillos of Iberia, the proposal seemed foreign and alien yet exciting. A new development that would give a leashed a uh, public, a uh, legal voice in the proceedings of the nation. To those much older who had seen society much different than that of a beer today, there's cynicism, but some couldn't help but be optimistic. Maybe, just maybe, this could be the real deal. The outcome could be a hopeful one, one that would stop Iberia's uh, decimation. After all, it appears to be partly in the hands of the people who d now, does it not? It does. The armed forces roll. The situation in Iberia today is far removed from the past in these testing times to clearly influence Iberian political society, for example. It has become a common belief within certain sections of the Iberian government that the nation is under an ex existential threat from the forces of terrorism. It's been that Bolsheviks and separatists have ran rapid in the recent past, but they each our great nation with horrors of urban warfare. That has thus been a clear worry that the current process will not only stop the terrorist threat, but also increase it as incivility growth in the nation. It is through this worry that the military and its most staunch supporters have stepped into the limelight. The military very clearly wants to have a voice in the current ongoing debates. They, of course, claim that they only wish to do so in order to stave off the threats of instability and terrorism. The more cynical among us, however, deem that they only wish to do so in order to keep a hold of the power and stop any form of reform to our armed forces. Their intention is certainly to be seem to be wholly political rather than mere love for the nation. Iberia, of course, having a clear history of military involvement in political affairs. This occasion seems no different, but we can put a stop to the meddling in an obvious showcase of our commitment to reform. That being said, the capitulation of, to the armed forces may be necessary to stop in order to stop any separatist threat or leftist plot. They must be kept in order to these, keep order in these trying times. Rain the men for the time being. Well, I'm not sure, so I need to go back and look at these again, but... Ah, the final debate. Now the time has finally come. All gathered from the cross hall of Iberia to discuss the very future of the nation. Technocrats, conservatives, separatists, militaries, and liberals are all very miraculously under one roof. It will definitely be a hard fought endeavor to keep the peace between these opposing sides, but the result opportunity here is to truly transform Iberia. The result of which, it could set Iberia on a path of renewal and reward those in dark times. Many are hesitant and many more are extremely nervous at the potential power shifts that these debates may cause indeed. No one truly knows what the ramifications may be of this endeavor, however, it's certain that the future of Iberia will be shaped by what occurs in the coming uh, weeks. The consequences of this great debate will be felt for many generations to come. The debate is set to begin with it. Iberia's political landscape will be decisively decided upon. A very liberal indignation. Our agreement with the armed forces have clearly rattled some feathers in the Iberian Congress. The more liberal elements among us have kicked up an almighty storm in the debate, such as an apparently craven deal could be struck with the alleged authoritarian despots who have, have no regard for democracy. 
Resignations, a walkout soon followed after the tantrums, which all had one clear message. A glaring lack of faith in this government to deliver any meaningful democratic reforms. But why should we pay heed to these flabby and naive liberals? It would seem that from this kicking and screaming that the liberals would rather out or rather, our nation succumb to socialism, separatism, and subjugation than to give the armed forces a deserved role. These men are the monks most principal among us. They barely did what was necessary once before and to send the Bolshevik menace packing and put separatist notions back under their desired place, but sure. The liberals may be unhappy with their decision, but the nation will be thankful for a decision to bring the heroic military fully on board. Our brave boys will come before any limp liberal. So if this goes sideways, um, the final debate is over. Oh boy. Uh, uh, Iberian Council is strongly conservative, conservative, neutral. Call for the Congress. Ah, strongly reformist, neutral reformist. And we have mutual exclusive with no need for hay. So right now, we are reformists at 70, which is not bad. We've got some anti tanks, so that's going to help us out in the debate, right? Oh, absolutely. The final debate. Oh, boy. Netzram is online, eh? Good job, Speer. A moment today in Iberian history. After much toil and tra travail and many trial and tribulations, the Iberian Congress has reached its near climax. Near reached its climax. The day of the final debate is soon upon us, and all of Iberia holds its breath for the outcome. The debates thus far have not resulted in the shutdown of government or the tearing apart of the nation, but this final debate could set up a match that changes Iberia in an instant. Decades long ramifications may occur from these debates, going one in way or another. All will be decided as the council convenes for this great meeting. Among the councilmen, rank the most important players in the ongoing political process. The highest esteemed representatives from the technocrats, liberals, conservatives, army, and regionalists have gathered to shape the future of an entire nation. We too have come too far and sacrificed too much for this great day to descend into petty squabbling. For all of Iberia is counting on this council to deliver something that would stop the bloody decline of Iberia. Iberia has seen itself through violent separatism, civil war, treachery, public strife, the Bolshevik, the German menace, and of course, floods. But it could step up now and remain forever a shell of its former self. It's up to this council now to get into the tragedy. Great tragedy does not occur. Godspeed, gentlemen. Also, we do have a couple of uh, double chai spice black tea, but militaries clash with the technocrats. Oh boy. The ideas and solutions proposed by the technocratic elements of the council have been met with disdain and dismissiveness from the military's faction of the council. The militaries have made their contempt known, saying that the proposals from the Opus Dei and their allies will make Iberia unsafe. Clearly wishing to have a play on the threats from Bolshevism and separatism, the army have stated that they would be able to fight, unable to fight off the dangers to Iberian society. It soon became clear as the heat rose in the council that with every utterance of the militaries made against the proposal, the less chance of any sort of compromise could be reached. The technocrats fought back in accusations, defending the proposals and stating that the militaries only sought to keep a stranglehold on the despotic power of Iberia. With the debate raging on, it soon became clear to all those who saw that the council was marred by factionalism. If these men could not come together for Iberia now, some thought, then what could ever possibly unite them? We must keep together for Iberia's sake. Increased conflict with no results will weaken reformism. And inviting everybody here was probably a bad idea. Now, the conservatives clash with technocrats. They tend to push for civil liberty reforms uh, pursued by the technocratic councilmen have been met with an immediate negative reaction from the more conservative inclined members of the council. The conservatives have been brutal in the condemnation of the reforms, seeing in the heated hustings that the proposals go against everything that Iberia stands for and is sort of the treacherous liberalism that would tear this nation apart and, uh, and subdue it under unpatriotic ideology. The liberals have held their ground in the uh, proceedings, though, coming straight back to the conservatives and condemning them as tired out tyrants, only looking to keep the Iberian people down and themselves afloat. At one point, the debate looked so vicious that the surprise chairs were not thrown between the two competing sides. In the end, there appears to be a considerable amount of pushback from the sections of the Iberian political class against these reforms. While the reforms were apparently intended to simply improve the lives of everyday Iberians, their perception as a work of fifth column liberals by opposing factions that created clear schism on the council. Well, must not let schism overwhelm us. Militaries clash with the regionalists. How bad is it getting right now? Many had feared what would happen in the debates once the question of regionalism was brought up. Many of the Iberian political system had long held staunch opinions about the true nature of minority representation and what placated or placatings of such demands could mean for the future of the nation. Any previously camaraderie, camaraderie discussion of the debates would be eviscerated and forgotten about if the clashes rose over allegations of separatism and tyranny. Thus, it, it appears, was precisely what happened when the militaries gave the response to the regional proposals. The militaries' reply was lengthy, brutal, and uncompromising. Militaries after militaries rose to shut down the regionalists, calling them terrorist sympathizers, and the hideous face of separatist uh, treachery hidden behind a suit and tie. Man after man gave speeches that stated that Iberia would never give in to terrorism, and that the nation would remain strong in the face of se se uh, separatist terror, and was smashed down the terrorists instead of succumbing to it. The regionalists were, of course, appalled by these allegations of threatening a walkout due to the entire range of the military's faction. It seemed as though we were an inch away from the dismantling of the council, and it was only when temper's calm that a split was avoided. Clearly, it seems the council has some work to do to make sure the question can be answered without resulting in some irreversible irre political damage. The regional's question is truly a divisive one. We're so exemplary. And, of course, conservatives class with the regionalists. I just did it. I guess I just did all this to, uh, uh, see what it would be uh, like. The proposals of the regionalists have clearly struck a nerve of the elements of the Iberian political establishment. Among the groups, it must raise the ire of is, unsurprisingly, the conservatives. 
With a discussion on the apparent religionalists and proposal of a special regions program coming to an end, the conservatives would have one last say before the end of the proceedings. These final states would, as it turns out, scupper any remaining hopes of a functional debate over the regionalist question. The conservatives clambered up to speak their minds with a little care for what the regionalists thought in a brazen statement to the rest of the council. The conservative faction voiced that the proposed reforms are completely unacceptable, because Iberia is the only union of the two countries and there cannot be any real special status for other groups. With complete disregard for the demand of the regionalists, the conservatives stated that Iberia is indivisible and immortal and will not play into the hand of the little past with grandeurs of nationhood. As was expected, a statement received an immediate kickback from the regionalists who all called the conservatives out over their blatantly offensive and callous remarks. With this event, any notions about a helpful and healthy debate over regionalism can be disregarded. For it has been shown to all that the debate has showcased a problematic, problematic dynamic in the council that, if not put bad to bed soon, could end in imminent failure. The regionalist matter has evidently put a spanner in the works. An omnishambles through and through. It was once the word of the street that a great change was coming in Iberia. People had started to talk about freedom, openness, and a new start. It seems as though after debates, after decades in political purgatory, Iberia could reemerge from these debates as a fresh, forward-thinking ideal that can unite the people in spirit. This is to say that has not occurred. In fact, quite the opposite has fallen upon Iberia. We begin to make it look like the conyos in front of all of our people. The constant bickering, the blatantly unhealthy clashes, and the lack of anything even resembling a consensus has stifled any hopes that this process first brought about. A clear lack of support, a support, sort of any resolution, has been emphasized by critics of the talks, along with the constant fights that accompany the debate preceding. Now the message being passed around the public is one of failure and disdain. It seems that the competence displayed here has made the public even question our legitimacy not only to pass change, but even keep Iberia stable. The lack of any clear vision for Iberia's future is deeply concerning, yet we must find a way to press on. A different strategy is needed, and new ways of thinking may, may, may have to emerge, or confidence in Iberia's mission could fail to a dramatic point. Press on, we shall, but we have to question what quite the hurdle to overcome. We shall overcome. God is with us, isn't he? We're extremely stable, so call for the Congress. The delegates have finally arrived. Representatives of just about every political creed in Iberia are gathered, primed, and ready to decide what Iberia's uh, direction will be. Some are clearly here to seek radical change, be it for civil society, the autonomy of certain regions. Others are evidently here to make sure enough these seismic shifts do not occur and by any means disposable to them. It should be our duty to be a true and fair process, so we ensure that these bad faith actors do not stop the will of the Iberian people for reform, whatever their opinions may be. The long standing issues that have plagued Iberia politically will hopefully be conclusively settled here now, the Congress is to begin. The results of which will decide whether Iberia is to reju rejuvenate or decay, but by very well, we'll make sure that Iberia is set to rejuvenate with a fair and free Congress. Dismiss the remnant. More political power and stability. This one. If a beards are reformed, they cannot do so while the old guard clings on a power like decrepit leeches. They are clearly reactionary to the core and will block any attempt to change. Quite frankly, they are an obvious and a large block to any large-scale reformation that would save Iberia from eventual doom. These people are dinosaurs, hangers-on from a time that is no longer relevant to the current situation Iberia faces. The worst of the, whom are the old Spanish phalanges. So resistant to change, they probably wish for Iberia to burn before it sees any real fair change. It is time to dismiss these people from political life and thus assure the people that a real effort at reforming Iberia is... Taking place. A windy morning in Madrid. When Torrucota, Fernandez Brandon entered the palace of the Cortez that morning, he expected. Valcarcel's speech to be one of the mundane, frankly boring, routine nature. Even as the winds of change swept over Iberia and her government, nothing could undergo a tra democratic transition. Heck, even dramatic news had Valcarcel announced democracy as an aspirational goal to slowly build over the next decade. But within months, he, along with hundreds of other people sitting in the Cortez, found it all hard to believe. In the rest of his speech, Valcarcel outlined Iberia's need for a democratic transition, what elections were going to be organized, and how the transitionary rule of the Caduceus in the new system. Manuel Fraga did not really pay attention, still too stunned by the news, but ever so slowly, the world started to make sense again, and slowly Fraga became more and more excited. He stepped outside to take a deep, deep breath. Perhaps it was all the fresh air, perhaps just getting outside, that's what it really set in. After centuries of kings and queens and many decades of dictatorship, Spain and Portugal, Portugal would truly be free. Torcuato. Uh, where the heck were you? We've been looking everywhere, shouted an eager Alberto Lazares as he stepped outside himself. His smile was wild like a young child on Christmas morning. He stepped towards Fernandez Miranda, embracing him and patting his back. God darn, I thought I'd never see such a day. Alongside him was Manuel Fraga, the man who could claim more honesty than anyone else to be the lead architect of this new Iberian project. He spoke of the Cadillos on numerous occasions, urging political reform as a necessary step to truly eliminate corruption and ensure a stable Iberian Union. Now, he succeeded. Not with a violent revolution or destabilizing coup, but through peaceful reform, no longer would the cr masses cry out with rage for a want of a voice in government. No longer would corrupt officials cling to power for a lack of means to remove them. The old Iberia was coming to an end faster than he had ever dreamed. Iberia shall be reborn as we dismiss the remnant, but we do hand the Cateno. And I did redo this just a little bit. I did shout out the conservatives. Um, I did allow this, these three factions to keep here, and then we are broadcasting these. So we haven't lost as much stability or political power, but oh well. A major stumbling block to any attempt at making real progress to this process would be, of course, Marcel Caetano. As a newly and dictatorially empowered man, it's clear that if he was given any sort of leading role in the Congress, then he would act in a manner of bad faith and sabotage. We will ensure this does not happen. 
We had a promise to Liberian people that the change was coming, and that's what we shall do. To make sure Caetano doesn't cause trouble, he'll have to be convinced of the purpose of these undertakings, and if need be, be pressured on so he does not threaten the congressional pr process. His ego may take a knock to, but so be it. Liberia's future is at stake, and it will not be threatened by the reactionary tendencies of one man. Cafe talk. Yeah, they sound like all fanatics now. All this class struggle talk seems like moon speak to the average people. They're decidedly more savvy and reasonable when they announced the Belam Manifesto. The Portuguese took a sip of his Coca Cola while glancing at his two Spaniard comrades under the shadow of the cafe's awning. Summer in Madrid's outdoors would be tolerable, even in this brand new woolen suit. I don't know why the XLs refuse to just look at the situation. The recent changes in rhetoric make everyone on the left of Franco look insane. He chuckled a bit before continuing. Well, you were you were one of those fanatics yourself. Indeed, his friend had been arrested by Salazar's goons more than once. Sitting to his left uh, and cleaning his glasses, the third man, a civilian, gave a nod of agreement before laughing at his joke. Look, I'm a Marxist at heart, but we can't ignore reality. What we need is a party like what we ha they have in the United States. What's his name? Uh, a Harrington. All three nodded in cynical agreement. I think we could just get something like that. Heck, even the church might like it. The Portuguese of the group decided to retort, Yeah, that's well and good, but what do you do about all the people that work for them? They knew the Cadillo's favorite underlings would never get a trial, no matter what Jimenez de Asua and his other exiles wanted to believe. We could get ahead of the curve, you know. We can get the first shot being the only reasonable people left to the left of Fraga. He thought for a moment about it. Felipe Gonzalez, president of the Iberian Federation. He could get used to that idea, of course. So could Soraz and Guerra. We're both imagining their own inauguration as the social democratic leaders would give the uh, lead Iberia to prosperity and justice, preparations for the future, and prepared administrators. If we're to become a truly democratic state, then a real effort must be made to ensure the process runs smoothly and efficiently. This cannot be half hearted effort, at, wrecked by the start by inefficiency and bureaucratic incompetence. The administrators of the civil society have a clear but tough job to do. The transition to a full free and democratic state will be an arduous one, but it will be one that we will be prepared for. All actors involved will work in a position of good faith to truly transform Iberian society into one that is fair and democratic, of course. Economy as well. It's the economy. Yeah. But now we are only at, we're extremely stable, which is not bad, but we're not very reformist, which sucks. El sufamato, el sufato atomico, mortadelo y filmenon, uh, or semalo e mortadela in Portuguese, a popular comic strip written and illustrated by Francisco Ibanez, has just released its first form, long-form adventure. As operatives of the spy agency TIA, morta, mortadelo and filmon are dispatched by Professor Bacterio to infiltrate the nation of Terrania, a highly militarized a uh, German-speaking country ruled by Heinrich Heinz with an iron fist, our bumbling heroes must enter the tyrant's place or palace and recover a stolen vial of the titular atomic sulfate, developed by a bacteria as a pesticide which, due to his competence, makes insects grow to enormous size. Heinz intends to use his deadly weapon to conquer the world, and only our two brave Iberians can stop him. Needless to say, the comic book is proven to be an instant classic across Iberia, capitula ca uh, capitulating, capitulating, no, catapulting its characters and creating a new level of fame. And your resemblance to reality is purely coincidental. Lunar sacrifices, oh boy. Rotate the generals. We're not naive. We know that these great changes are commencing. We are commencing, which will have detractors. Among the most serious of these antagonists would be the old guards of the military. The head honchos of the Liberian military are likely to put a span in the works if we really all go all the way with this process. In order to stop this, we will shake up the military staff and rotate the generals to sap the power and influence. This should stop the old guard from acting up and allow us to continue the process without a major hiccup. With limited sacrifices. If Iberia is to be saved, of course. Then the transitional process must occur as a limited kickback as possible from certain sections of the Iberian political life. Compromises are needed in these testing times, and we all can't get what we want. Certain hopes for regional autonomy and full blown freedom will have to be dashed, at least for now. A splintering would be cost and something we would likely uh, uh, be unable to come back from. We can have falling apart now, this key stage of the process, so to do so, we put everything we have to work so hard in jeopardy. Sacrifice will have to be made for the good of Liberia and its people. The Council on Chain. It's time to truly showcase our commitment to the process directed by the Iberian Council through loosening certain restrictions that were previously put on the Council. Learn how to have a freer reign to guide the extraordinary transition that has taken place in Iberia. Also, show the faith that Iberian leadership has in the Council and good work in its doing. A mandate will be established by the decision one in trust in the transitional process that has taken place. The Council now has our full confidence to do what is needed to achieve this, achieve this transition. Speak to the governors. It should become obvious by now to everyone with the democratization process speaking up. All of Iberia's most influential and powerful people must be convinced of our cause in order to make the transition as smooth and as painless as possible. The governors of Iberia rank amongst some of the most important key players in the political scene. We shall speak to them to address and put down any concerns they have about the process and thus help guarantee a much smoother democratic transition and tie in the window. There was once a time where Iberia, for better or worse, had to be ruled with an iron fist, of course. <clears throat> History may not absolve those who once ruled over Iberia with a firm and authoritative hand, but from now on, things can change. The age of authoritarianism in Iberia is to come to an end. Rules, laws, and accountability will put an end to full-blown despotism in our nation. It is no longer acceptable, nor wanted to lead with a selfish and cruel iron hand. Something far more open and democratic will probably, or hopefully, take its place. Lose despotism, more conservatism, liberal conservatism, liberalism, um, and improve our stability, of course, as well. So right now, we're stable, which is not great, but, you know, stable is better than unstable.
can't do any of these. Sounds kind of sucks. But it is 1969, so we're not super concerned. I'm just more concerned about the economy, though. Five, eight point five percent is not bad. Deficit's god awful. It's it's still going up, but it's slowly getting going further down. We do this, we spend a little bit more money, but we might be able to collect slightly more money. Taxable population, better stability, security, efficiency, you know, all that good stuff is super nice. Inflation is going down further, so almost 8.6% growth, not bad. I'm going to choose a new state. Well, it seemed like it would be stuck in its own political mess forever. The competing antagonistic power game and bureaucratic inefficiency, all tied together by the tight grasp of authoritarianism, once meant that it seemed my bureau would be sent to the ash heap of history remarkably. This seems to be no longer the case. With the thankful success of the democratic process, a new state can now rise out of the old Iberia. A new democratic Iberia will take its place, saving us from the trials and tribulations of what really could have been a failed state. We're not ready to become a truly democratic state, averting what could have been a significant disaster. Uh, the political party's popularity can be tracked on the decision screen. Oh my god. Wow, look at all this stuff. We had a lot of changes here. Our economy would change to capitalism. Nice. Closure. Unable to uh, control his emotions, the inspector sat in front of the files in a house not even in his home, and it began to cry uncontrollably and bitterly. This case had taken everything from him. Everything he had held ever dear. His wife, his home, his job, his friends, his pride. Now it was all over before him. Lay the dress he had tracked the missing pair to. Uh, a small flat in Barcelona, nothing befitting a wealthy heiress, but it sure was happy home nonetheless. Picking up the receiver of the phone next to him, he's briefly stalled. Many thoughts crossed his troubled minds and carefully considered his next action. With a grim determination, he, however, finally entered the number he knew he needed to call. A trippy voice answered on the other end, informing the inspector that he was indeed speaking to the municipal police of Valladolid, Valladolid and then he asked what he was calling about. And sure not to mention his name, the inspector gave the information he had now worked years to obtain. All he could manage after the call was a long sigh. Not even an hour later, the phone rang again, waking the inspector out of his daze. With well, a joint he sat up as he unmistakably recognized the voice of the old sergeant. His old sergeant. What's the problem? More, however, was what the man said next. We want you back. Gladly, sir. Preparing the Iberian elections. 30 years of dictatorship has made the prospect of a free and fair election purely theoretical up until now. Franco's relinquishment of power to the council has changed that, which means that Iberia has entered a crossroads where the way in which they choose, we choose to organize elections has been pushed to the forefront of political discourse. Whether it be the question of foreign observers or the possible extension of suffrage, the future of Iberian democracy and the Union national now political hegemonies now lies in the halls of the cham council chambers with decisions which will shape the lives of Iberians for generations. <clears throat> From the conservatives to the reformists, lines are being beginning to be drawn on the questions that we will have to answer in the coming months. A liberal democracy, authoritarian democracy, the rural-urban political divide, the answer to these questions will decide the fate of Iberia on both the domestic and world stage for years to come. A monumental task. Preparing our democracy. Before venturing into the first free elections held in the peninsula in over 30 years, there are some critical matters to attend to. As the final steps towards democracy are taken, we'll do our best to ensure that this transition keeps the nation pointed in the right direction. It's clear that this path was a necessary one for the stability of the Union, but exactly how this process will play out is still undecided. Setting up elections. Oh God, parts of political power getting quite bad, and the and it's not very good as is. Uh, rallies in the city. Mm -hmm. Meeting in the villages. Censor press with free press. More political power, which is nice. It's now or never. Get the ballot boxes. First campaign. Shortly after the announcement that the people would partake in the upcoming democratic elections, interest groups and political activists have been congregating, organizing, and merging into increasingly a larger. Uh, parties and coalitions, oh, uh, some which are, are falling apart as quickly as their rose. As the days go by, several larger parties seem to be taking shape, increasingly causing worry among the members of the Iberian Council, or National Party. Which will take part in the elections, the Union Nacional may need our help more than anticipated, as these parties keep growing and consolidating their movements. Discussion around what level of interference is appropriate in the campaign is for the reason ongoing behind the closed doors in the Council Chambers, the one mayor of Bilbao. Pilar. Carega, organizer notes and adjusted her reading glasses. She was a very familiar face to the other Bilbao government officials, having served on the city council for five years. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Bilbao City Council meeting, July 9th, 1969. Hopefully, this will be the fast and efficient meeting. I guess that's up to me. To have a woman sitting here today, not only hosting today's conference, but sitting at the head of the local government, was a truly unprecedented. It's something not seen since before the Spanish Civil War. By all means, she's as qualified as a woman as there was in the country and as a passionate as an advocate for a national Catholicism as any woman could be. But perhaps that made the situation even more unusual. They think that a woman who fully believed that a woman's place in society was to be subservient to men would accept much less actively seek out such a high-ranking post. But Carrega was always an ambitious woman. If she had not been, she would not she would not have tried so hard to become an industrial engineer when no other woman had done the same. She certainly would not have succeeded. succeeded. Being married to one of Iberia's top diplomats didn't exactly harm her political career either. All that said, besides the novelty of having a woman in office, Carrega was not especially different than any other Iberian mayor. But Carrega's main goal of importing her was neither out of a benevolent expansion of women's rights nor a cynical move to assuage the rights or rise in radicals outrage at women's lack of opportunity. Mayor Carrega had much more important issues to worry about, such as repairing the potholes that created the streets of Babel. Don Yebara, do you have your uh, traffic report available? Augustina Mundios, Grandis is dead. Oh, look at this guy. 
Uh, this guy was long regarded as one of the most fearsome men in all of Iberia, a brilliant tactician, a ruthless warrior, and a radical conservative, sympathetic to the goals of Nazism. He led the Blue Division of Spanish volunteers in the Second World War, marching in Leningrad alongside the Hare and the SS. In the aftermath of the war, rumors ruled that Hitler sought to overthrow Franco and Salazar to make Munoz Grandes his Papa Cadillo. Thankfully, Iberia remains free, and in the decades after the war, Munoz Grandes served faithfully as one of Iberia's top military commanders and political advisors. A vibrant and lively man, well into the 60s, his health deteriorated rapidly in his final months. He went to sleep the evening of July 11th, and his heart stopped shortly before midnight. Grandes was a bona fide celebrity among the Iberian far right, the Falange and among the Spanish nationals, and they mourn his death with great reverence. But many other people are, truth be told, quite pleased to hear that the man is finally dead. They do not dare to say it in public, but disdain. But that is saying Grandes held towards reform, even the barest deviation from his hardline conservatism, made him a symbol of everything wrong with the Iberian government in the eyes of liberals and reformists across the peninsula, in the city of Malaiga. Some elderly residents recalled that he had led the army to slaughter thousands of alleged Republicans among them, the neighbors. Among them, neighbors, friends, and family in the bloodshed of February 1937. The death of Munoz Grandes marks not just the end of one of Iberia's most notorious leaders, but also serves as a reminder of the great age of many of Iberia and Iberia's top leadership. Salazar also died recently, and Franco, Francisco Franco is 76 years old. What will the Iberian government look like in 10, 5, or even just one year from today? The Olgar passes the baton. Dos Santos Costa becomes a leader. Rallies in the city. Special media coverage. Uh, as, well, let's, I'm going to give you oh, rallies in the city. Iberians in the urban er areas of our country are a nation rallying increasingly large marches, excitedly anticipating the elections. The larger Spanish and Portuguese cities, as well as the larger cities of the high minority population, seem to be following this trend. The enthusiasm for a commitment to democracy is encouraging, but some less savory elements may benefit from the energy in the cities. Leftists and liberals alike appear to be gaining traction in these areas of potentially worrying sign. If you wonder about increasing admin efficiency, please go ahead. Look at that. Awesome. The campaign begins as parties begin to take shape and serious threats to the Union National start to rise. It has become apparent to the council members that some election interference may be needed to secure a more favorable result. In the back doors of the council chambers, all but the most diehard reformists are discussing which measures to take to stem the tide of liberalism. The use of such interference work would undoubtedly harm the future prospects of a beer democracy. But for the more restrained reformists, the choice between democracy and the, whether they lose their stability or where they win is uh, seriously contested. Though sympathetic to the rule of Fran Franco and Caetano wish to actively fund the Union Nacional through proxies and Swiss bank accounts to ensure that no other party can match their level funding, others have considered using suppression to ensure that no liberal parties can become elected or even become part of a coalition. For these moderates, so as long as some kind of a conservative party wins, Iberia will be safe and the reforms will be limited, naturally. The reformist ideologies have expressed disgust at the thought of illegal funding or su of suppression of parties and reject the notion that only the Union Nacional can guide this country sufficiently, declaring that only free and fair elections can allow the people of Iberia to choose the direction of their nation and dem democratically. The reactions like the anger, anger, causing anger, suppress them. Free and fair campaigns. Um, I think the strategy actually is to actively fund them. Two reactions like causing anger among liberals and leftists. I think that's really the route, the route that you should go. But let me try free and fair campaigns first. Social liberals are more helped out by this. Meetings in the villages. The rural areas of Iberia are home to the often overlooked silent majority of the nation. It is in these regions where traditional values remain strong and the church still enjoys an elevated place among its communities. Voters in these areas may be inclined to come out in large numbers to support strong and conservative voices, but in the end, this all may depend on how we engage with them leading up to the elections. Energizing these populations may be the key in increasing the num numbers of the polls. Hmm. 140, huh? Oh, we're fair. Oh, we're not even acceptable yet. Oh, my God. No. Wait, what is it going down? Above 75%. Oh, God. Well, that's not good. Uh, de democratic rallies in the cities. The rallies I've been seen since the process of restoring democracy started out have only gotten larger and more radical. The excitement for the upcoming election can be heard even in the most remote places, and while this is a promise for the future of the Iberian democracy, there has been an increasing worry among some of the council in rural areas that the wrong people may see a benefit in the eagerness for democracy. Liberals, separatists, leftists. All of these groups have had a resurgence since the rallies began, and every day the support grows wider and wider. Many of the council have expressed disgust that the prospect of a liberal or even socialist government have considered a media blackout to halt this momentum, and prevent what they see as a red tide poised to sweep the nation. Rural representatives have also expressed support of this measure, wishing to keep leftists and cosmopolitan urbanites as far away from the community as possible. The more optimistic within the council have stated their opinion, opposition to the blackout, believe that they can beat back, beat back the political enemies on the mar merits of their arguments rather than resorting to their dirty tricks and backdoor pol politics. Blackout the media? Left freedom ring. Special media coverage. As the campaign takes shape, the media will have to cover the elections and advertise the arrival to the people. Iberia's population will be informed of this momentous event, if we ever want to say the uh, election was a legitimate one. Through print, radio, and TV, the aim will be that no Iberian voter remains ignorant of what is to come. As the coverage is broadcasted throughout the nation, we'll be watching the democratic process unfold with bare breath. 
So far, this has been the loudest and most excited for the election. This does not bode well for the future of Iberia, should the liberals, or even, God forbid, the socialists use their advantage to win the election. In order to carry out balances, many within the p council have begun to discuss ways to get rural, God-fearing conservatives to lead the way with their faith and tradition, providing a solid bedrock for the glory of the nation into the coming decades. By utilizing our ties with the church, we could ensure those of the whole nation together not only come out to vote, but one to come out and vote for the right party. With enough propaganda in the right place, we could turn the farmer and the villager blo voting blocks away from Alancia Popular and towards the Union Nacional and potentially secure victory in, the, uh, in their election. <clears throat> that being said, many of the moderates of the council say that the opposition on the Alancia Popular victory uh, in the election will be satisfactory as we share many of their values. The more liberal men in the council proclaim that there should be no meddling in their areas and allow the people that have a beard to choose the government they wish. However, whether these council members are truly loyal to the Union Nacional has been debated since the council was granted additional powers. Farmers? Keep our hands out of it. Causing anger among them, huh? It's only 1% more. Well, you know what? We'll go with this one. We could probably do this one and still be okay, right? It's only 1% more, and they have, like, they have no support there, so... 14%. Still not bad. The campaign style guy, though it's undeniable that extensive media coverage is needed, certain restrictions are going to be necessary in the campaign going forward. There are those who deem this decision hypocritical, but they are clearly much needed measures to ensure stability as we approach the most important da date since the Union's founding. Unhelpful criticism of the way the elections are being run serve to do nothing but fan the flames of anger and be barred from use in any political campaign or organization. For this reason, the selection of words and phrases are to be banned in political advertisements, speeches, and all other forms of publicity. Oh boy. Yeah. Fair, yeah. That's not good. It's now or never. Uh, with the campaign in full swing, the airwaves are being deluged by talks of elections to come, with a successfully larger crowds gathering cities and towns across the nation. Meanwhile, political organizing in rural areas is taking place with an unexpected level of energy. A few young parties have been successfully consolidating the support through the early weeks of the campaign, most notably the conservative Alancia Popular, the economically liberal Partido Renovador, Democratico, and the social liberal Union Republicana. Stakes are as high as ever for our nation as we enter a new age of democracy. Second at the elections, if we're not prepared, the 1970 elections of the new Iberian Council will prone to be prone to a number of logistical issues. The extensive administration burden of organizing Iberia's first democratic elections will be felt in a long time, or felt in the long and short term preparations, as well as on election day. It's therefore essential that all bases are covered as the work begins in setting up one of the greatest events in our history. Well, we'll see what happens. As we're lagging super hard. Get the ballot boxes. Elections are to happen. Every registered voter should have the ability to get the ba to a ballot box and cast a vote. A voter is too far away from the nearest voting station. You may be dissuaded from t partaking in the process. An unfavorable outcome from the de democratic point of view. That's especially a key issue in the rural areas, as there are small communities across the vast expanse of Iberia's interior, far from the larger cities. It's not these often forgotten communities where a special action may be needed in order to ensure that vo voters' voices are heard. Special deployments. Police deployments. Recently, there's been increasing talk of the possibility of voter intimidation in the coming elections. There are growing concerns leading many to call for an increased police presence on Election Day, where the Guardia Civil will take an active role in defusing any potential confrontations and preventing unrest, despite the outrage. Most of the officials in charge of the election preparation are assuring the council that any such fears are overblown and that everything will be under control when the voting begins, and preparing the ballot boxes. Iberia has always been a uh, sparsely populated area, with much of the electorate being located in rural locations, where getting to the ballot box is considerably harder than it is in our urban centers. This raises the question of how exactly we should distribute the ballot boxes to ensure that all voters can reach them and get their say in the election. Representatives from rural areas have asked for disproportionately more ballot boxes than in urban areas because of the worry that there won't be enough to make sure that the people in these small communities can reach them on Election Day. However, representatives from the urban areas claim that this is unfair, that the current plans for distribution should suffice, and that rural representatives are trying to have their areas overrepresented. Regardless of what proposed plan we choose, we will be making either the urban or rural areas feel threatened by underrepresentation, which could turn into an apathy from the people who live in these regions, potentially undermining their faith in whatever government is elected. Rural areas clearly need more. Optimal distribution is fair. The observer question. Certain members of the Iberian Council are proposing that the elections be monitored by international observers. And ensure the integrity of the democratic process. They argue that this will improve our diplomatic standing among the democracies of the world in addition to solidifying the legitimacy of the nation. Or the elections. However, several council members have spoken up against the proposal, labeling it as an infringement on Iberia's national sovereignty. Even some ostensibly pro-democracy members are among those opposed to the measure, making this a clearly divisive issue. Ready the Guardia Civil. 
A worrying, sh a worried share by many in the populations whether the kind of voter intimidation that took place under Cadiz's rule will carry on in the new electoral system. As a result of this, the idea of using the Guardia Civil to protect polling stations has been brought to the council. Using the police will be able to break up any conflicts that would occur, and even as a deterrent to dissuade them troublemakers from showing up. Furthermore, it would be a signal to our citizens that we are truly committed to democracy and encourage them to participate where they otherwise wouldn't have. In spite of this, the general consensus among the officials that we have put in charge of organizing the election is that the fears of voter intimidation are exaggerated, and the deployment of the Guardia Civil will be a waste of police time and resources which could be otherwise be spent elsewhere. I don't see any voter intimidation. We need it. It is a contentious issue whether or not the current voter registration plans are too strict, too strict, or perhaps even too expansive. Which Iberians should be among those to take, partake in this crucial choice for the nation's future? The conservative elements of the council advise caution, decrying and suggesting an expanding of suffrage in the elections. Loud crowds, however, are heard across the country, urging the council and the Cadillos to ensure everyone's right to participate with a minority of council members speaking up on this behalf. On their behalf. The merits of both arguments, in addition to the logistics of the matter, are to assure influence how the register is drawn up the questions of observers. With the newly granted powers, the reformers of the council are now in the position to truly reform Iberia into a democracy, but this means that the way that we structure our electoral system is still up in the air, and it's up to them to determine how, what the new Iberia should look like. The first issue that requires discussion is whether foreign governments should be allowed to monitor our election to ensure that the election is truly run fairly. We also not legitimize whatever party wins by extension of our political system. There are words among many that other more national so any people that this would be the fringe on the sovereignty of the nation and potentially give the countries we grant observer status a chance to influence the election. That being said, the Heartland reformers de demand that we allow total transparency in this upcoming election as the peninsula hasn't seen a free election since the days of the Second Spanish Republic back in 1936, and they fear that authoritarianism could return without these international checks and balances. We could reach a compromise between the two by allowing the observers, but in a limited fashion, in order to garner a, a better reputation among the democracies of the world. Nothing to hide. Teach them their duty. With the administrative hurdles overcome, it's now up to the Iberian voters to raise their voices and partake in their civic duty. It's all well and good to lay the material groundwork of the electoral process, but a new state of mind must be cultivated among the people. Decades without elections has left Iberian complacent to the status quo and apathetic towards bettering the country's future. A channel should no doubt be hard to break in time. We believe that our bold actions in this moment will be the spark to eventually free Iberia from the shackles of the past. And setting up suffragist lists. Oh, liberals is, uh... Huh, you are. Or did you get last time, so... Um, oh, that's Fraga. No, no. No. Huh. Torcuta. We, we did want that one, guy. For some reason, I want purple here. Or yellow. Huh. The question of suffrage is perhaps the most important question in deciding the election. Who deserves the right to choose how they're governed and who doesn't is a very controversial issue among the council members, and three main proposals have been put forward for the council to vote on. The proposals put forward by the conservative details a plan which continue to exclude the people who couldn't vote in the undemocratic elections back when the Cadiz reigned supreme. This come under heavy fire from the hardline reformers and was surely outraged people disenfranchised by it. However, the conservatives argued that allowing pe these people to vote would only lead to instability in a newly Christian democracy. The radical reformers have declared that suffrage should be expanded to cover over everyone over 18. Well, they only hold a minority in the council, they seem to have popular support throughout the country, judging by the rallies which have been held and visited by tens of thousands in order to pressure the government to open up the franchise. The final proposal, seen as a compromise option between the conservatives and the hardliner reformers, details universal suffrage with an ID registration system. This system would potentially dissuade some of the elements the conservatives want to ban while fulfilling the populist desire for universal suffrage. No bass, no students, no communists. Anyone with an ID. Liberals. Liberal conservatism. Suffrage must be expanded. So now we're down here. Jornado de Reflexion. I share that I don't take this decision lightly. While the chaos of the past years failed at putting an end to reunion, I say this with certainty, I bear on its last legs. Indeed. Uh, I would not have survived this far if it was not for the invaluable help provided to me by the council along with the competent leadership of Portugal's Cadillos. Having seen the work of the council towards the survival of our union, I'm not confident in the value of reform. The system of government, as it stands, cannot last much longer. Despite how it pains me to say these words, I realize that stepping down is the only way forward. I too have many memories, and too much hope in the people of Iberia to let you down. I believe that you have it in yourselves to lead the union into a brighter future. Thank you for having put your trust in me, Francisco Franco. The first Iberian elections. Exemplary. And what do we get? Ah, the church bell rang six times. On any other day, there would be a, a few people meandering around on their commute to work, but this was not any other day. The announcement of Iberia's first free elections has been made. The jubilation tingled in the air, leaving its mark on anyone who ventured out that day. All excitement and an anticipation that had been built up to the announcement had burst out into celebration larger than any other in Iberian history for one day. All peoples in the nation felt united, and all differences had been ascended. The old wept to see how far the nation had come from the days when the collapse felt inevitable. 
The young finally had the chance to be represented and to choose a government they weren't born into. As the day marched on, the crowds only got bigger, the cheers only got louder, and the spirit of democracy grew stronger for Franco. It's just another day. He didn't get up early, nor did he eat breakfast with any haste. However, as the aging Caudillo left his residence for some air, he saw the crowds. Crowds he had not seen the like since the victory 31 years ago. He had only reluctantly given additional powers to the council, and throughout this process had gone back and forth on whether it had been a good idea, but seeing the people of his nation cry with such elation caused a single tear to drop from behind his glasses. I'd be have been saved. Let it begin. Election uh, arrangements. Ballot boxes are beginning to be delivered all throughout the country as applications flood the Electoral Commission for volunteers to help tally up the votes and voting registration forms have been created a mile long of uh, paperwork. The talk of organizing the election is over. Now the practicality of running an election has begun to take place. Now the decision made by the council and preparation for the election has begun to take shape and there have been criticism from all sides regarding the handling of the logistical side of things. Some believe that the number of police deployed is too much while others say that it's been too little. Some say that there's not enough ballot boxes were sent to rural areas while others said there are too many were sent. The old adage, you can't please everyone, applied to the politics, seemed to be seemed to be closer to, you can't please anyone. Only time will tell whether the measures taken for the electoral preparations were the correct ones. Will it be enough? Do we, do we want it to be? Yeah, we'll see. And? I like we did change the flag, though. Because we are now the Iberian Federation, and instead of a union, we are a federation. Good job, Central Africa. The restoration of the parties. The campaign trial has officially begun, which has led to the restoration of old parties and formation of new ones. Currently, minor parties begin to emerge everywhere as anticipated, but through mergers and arrangements, minor parties are taking shape into a few major parties representing the ideological makeup of modern Iberia. At the moment, the parties that seem to be gaining traction are the socially liberal Union Republicana, the conservative Alancia Popular, and the economically liberal Partido Renovador, Renovador uh, Democratico. The newfound diversity in the Republic has shocked the old guard who believe that many in the of the views now being openly advocated in the street have died out under the Cadillo's watch, but to their dismay, both the red banner and the flag of the Second Republic is being paraded. A row with seemingly no consequences. With the decline of the Union Nacional, reactionary elements within the party have been provoked to believe that a stronger hand will be needed to guide the UN, I mean, uh, the Iberian Union, to victory in the election. Or UN, I guess, to guide the uh, Nacion Union Nacional to victory in the election. Hopefully, that they aren't too difficult. Only 38%, man. If these two form together, then they could beat us, but... Oh. Union the Republica, Republican, Republicana organizes a Galician rally. Galicia, while not as violent or loud as the Basque and Catalan separatists, does have a substantial separatist movement, as we learned earlier. This made the Union the Repub Republicana's decision to outline their plans for minority representation in the city a uh, clear sign of the commitment to the peace caused a peaceful dev devolution. The rally itself was rather short, but the speech was almost drowned out by the cheers. Once the rally was over, brawls sporadically broke out across the city between Galician nationals and Unionists. City officials denounced the UR speakers for incitement of violence and disturbing the peace. Torquato Fernandez Miranda refused to acknowledge the, the, the announcement, a saying committed to the slogan of freedom and autonomy for all of Iberia's children. His words would have gotten any man in prison mere months ago, but now it's become the rallying cry for the up-and-coming Union Republicana, a party dedicated to reducing inequality. Empowering uh, Iberia's minorities and seeing that the process of democratization is brought to, to its natural conclusion. The parties have seen widespread support in urban centers from moderate minority nationalist movements, from the more, most hardline reformists in the council. Promising a total break from the politics of the past, will they be able to muster enough support for the radical change? Or, or radical agenda? How could this be possible? Now we're at 40%. Even if they combined, they still might be able to beat us. Alancia Popular announces opposition. Those frolicking erupto communists would be the death of this nation should they be elected. The fact that they have as much support as they do goes to only show the degradation of traditional Iberian morals and the values that occurred in our society. We as Alancia Popular vowed not to only halt this menace, but reverse the degradation and make the Iberians proud of their nation once more. From Fraga, leader of the Alancia Popular, following the Union uh, Republicano rally in Galicia, Fraga released a scathing article on the conservative ABC newspaper targeting Fernandez Miranda and his party. Criticizing the inflammatory and anti-Iberian language and highly idealistic and unrealistic policies, the article is inflamed public opinion with its use of divisive language. To counter the article, Fraga released a manifesto in which the policy positions of Alancia Popular were showcased. As expected, it caused regressively combating terrorism, maintaining a unitary style of government, and strengthening the other bond between the church and the state. Naturally, this has come under heavy fire from the liberals, who claim that Alanth Al Alianza Popular wished to maintain the status quo at a time when reform is needed, with conservatives arguing they only wish to preserve what makes Iberia great. Excellent. I still don't like this one. PRD calls for unity. With tensions rising among the Union Republicana and the Alancia Popular, the Partido Renovador Democratico has issued a call for unity concerning the inflammatory language used by both sides as a catalyst for future political violence. Whether this call will fall in deaf ears remains to be seen, but the publicity around the entire stunt has given the PRD a boost in the polls and propelled them to the lead for the title of the main center party with their emphasis on the civility needed in politics. 
promising a focus on economic liberalization along with vague promises of social reform. The Partido Renovador Democratico has managed to gain support from the urban business leaders and the money that comes along with them, given the stagnation that occurred under the Caudillo's rule. Their message of adopting a laissez-faire approach has resonated with many of the peoples most affected by the pitfalls of the old economic system. In the more measured tone, the social issues could mean that the PRD stands to push off failures from both other parties. Were they convinced enough people in the po marketplace of ideas to win the election remains to be seen? Completely irrelevant. Probably. But happy November! God, November elections. Good God, no. What is going on in France? Are they still killing each other? They are. The French is... My goodness. Who's in Italy? Fanfani. I have seen a place before. F.E.T.E. de los Lyons merges with the Union Nationale. With the rising liberal uh, sentiment that plagues the nation today, uh, we have seen it fit to officially merge ourselves with the Portuguese sister party. Despite some of our minor grievances, both of our great parts, the strive for strong Iberia, built on a solid moral foundation, will now do so in a singular voice, a force. Alejandro Rodriguez de Valcarcel, former leader of the, uh, the other group, and now leader of the consolidated Union Nacional. In an unsurprising move, Spanish Falange has merged with the Portuguese Union Nacional. The growth of the liberals in the Partido Renovador Democratico and the Union Republicana have pushed the two parties together in an alliance to hope that, that working is won. They can avoid splitting the vote and secure victory in the election. With well, some of the hardline phalangists in the FET de las Jones have stated their opposition, they don't, the numbers effectively undermine the party, and as such, nothing is expected to come of it. Hopefully, hold the liberals back. Ah, Torre de Ebira finished. Standing tall above the raucous bustle and ram roads of Madrid, a shining monolith glints in the relentless sun. Three years have passed since construction of the tower began, and despite the trials and tribulations of recent times, the many long and arduous hours of uh, labor paid off. The struggle of every worker is, respect, is paid respect to on this day, as their efforts culminate in the ceremony in all of Iberia waits, the inauguration of the Torah de Iberia. Every person who meant anything in Iberia was present, as such an achievement would cause great uh, for great cause for great national celebration. The mayor of Madrid took great pride in seeing all the immensely powerful people who had arrived to the city. After all, he'd be the one to personally lead the service of years for skyscrapers to be declared open by him. It was not merely a time for festivities, it was time for reflection. Look back on what had changed during those long years of construction. Francisco Franco grazed or gazed upon the vastness of the Iberian capital city from the top floor of the building. Iberia had gone through many changes in the past decade, but in the moment, a new sense of optimism for the Union's future washed over him. Leaning on the window, it felt like no matter where the future may take Iberia, the Torre de Iberia shall stand firm as a symbol of their strength and perseverance. Long wait is over. Nice. More exemplary to Sable. Come on, can you just get to the election? I want to see the election results. Oh, membership of the Union Nacional slips. While there remains some speculation that the Union Nacional would lose members of the newly formed parties, the amount that has fallen has left the Union Nacional party officials gobsmacked. Following the ascension of the URAP and PRD, members who had previously been suspected of having liberal or even moderate conservative opinions have left the party in droves, accusing the UN of betraying the democratic principles as such and still after the restoration of the free and fair elections. According to some, the exit has been a major blow to the party and has removed the electability that they once held, however. Alejandro Rodriguez de la Valcarcel has publicly stated that the, the loss of membership is a good thing as it means the party has been purged of liberals who seek to undermine it. Privately, Valcarcel has seen one of the party's HQ, and any attempt to communicate with them only resulted in a volley of curses and seething anger. How far have we fallen? Far enough. So covertly supporting a party following the exodus of the liberals have become apparent to the government that there is a very serious threat of a liberal party winning the election. As a result, the question of secret funding has been brought up behind closed doors in order to prevent the partido or the PRD or the God forbid the UN or UR from taking over and carrying on with even more reform. However, who this funding should go to remains undecided. The UN seemed to like the obvious choice of any extrajudicial funding would be needed, but some of the government feel like they have too have fallen, fallen too far to be saved. Even with covert support, instead they have made a proposal to fund the Alancia Popular as they've been having seen a strong chance of winning the election. Although there are some differences in policy between the two, the AP is still a conservative party opposed to the Liberals and therefore broadly agree with the vision of the Union Nacional. They could, for this reason, be the key to preventing liberal influence from disturbing the status quo. That being said, some state their opposition to any election tampering and wish to ensure that people of Iberia get to choose their own government, whether that be a liberal conservative one. National Liberal Stay committed to a barren democracy. We weaken sovereignty. Oh boy. Oh boy. We get no extra political power from that, which sucks. Let's just go issues arise. Of course. Well, the government has predicted a large amount of registrations. The amount of applicants have flooded the Electoral Commission, and there are serious worries that the amount of ballots will be printed to approve or provide everyone who is registered. If we weren't able to meet the demand, the press was to find out it would seriously harm the government's image and weaken the people's trust in the government to provide a free and fair election. However, it would be too costly to be uh, able to print enough ballots in time for the election as printing houses would have to be subsidized to work overtime. That being said, it's not immediately certain that the amount by which we would be able to print will fall short of the demand. Should there only be a few thousand people who do not have a ballot, there's a chance that the press wouldn't pick it up. 
Not going to avoid the cost. Additionally, by targeting areas that were predicted to vote against the government, it could give us a push needed to secure victory. What they don't know won't hurt them. Put more ballots or image is key. Ah, uh, minor cost. Election day. The day had finally arrived. A new chapter in the short history of the Iberian Union. Parties and politicians have risen and fallen, but the day will mark the destiny of Iberian democracy for years to come. And for the first time in decades, so it should be the people of Iberia who decides the outcome, of course. The size of the crowds on this momentous occasion dwarfs the one scene where the election was first announced, and while the feelings of excitement will still remain, there's something else accommodating it that wasn't there before. A feeling of unspoken trepidation. Questions that plague the mind of the average Iberian. What would if it all went wrong? What if all this was for nothing and the old regime remains rebranded for a new decade? There are celebrations from dusk till dawn, but that anxiety hung over like a slice tight. Ready to fall at any moment, ready to spear their newfound liberty. Antonio, Isabella, Leo, Gabriel, and Gabriela could not have less in common. What common ground does a bureaucrat, a student, a banker, and a nun share? Usually very little, but today they all felt that feeling in their stomach. As they gripped their secret ballot, they were united in the foreboding apprehension about the country's future. No words were exchanged, but they all shared in the comfort of each other's worries, worry glances. If the future were to be bleak, they wouldn't have to face it alone, but together. Well, in power. It would be easy to say that Franco could never really connect with his people and understand their plight, but even he could feel the uneasiness in the air. The people wanted a reform that had been the sure of it, but they, if they didn't get it, what would they do? Who would face the wrath of the disillusioned masses? Franco was many things, but Clueless was not one of them, and he realized how this position, however ceremonial may be, could be the target of Papa's outrage. After coming to this conclusion, he decided to visit the cathedral of his hometown of, of Ferrol for the remainder of the day to pray for everything to work out as intended. Here it comes, and who wins? 34%? 34%? Wait, the AP? Better than nothing. You, wait, how did, what, how does AP win? Well, there are perhaps the widest base, support base of the four parties. Alancia Popular has been able to storm the election and go on to form the new government of Iberia. Throughout the nation, staunch Catholics and town residents cheer as the conservatives claim victory. The news has re received a warm welcome on the Genova Street in Madrid as Alancia Popular members celebrate outside the party's HQ. Fraga and Diogo de Amaral, par party president and general secretary respectively, have both prepared a speech they intend to give in the Plaza Mayor, Mayor in uh, Madrid to the cheering crowds present there. With a letter from Franco and Caetano congratulating AP for the victory in hand, Fraga used occasion to mainly congratulate the party, more specifically himself, for season victory against his liberal opponents and how they intend to lead Iberian to a new age of strength and prosperity. Several journalists have noted Fraga's narcissistic tone throughout the whole speech, seemingly placing himself above the rest of the party and by extension the contempt of blatant and Amaral's glares as Fraga during his speech. However, many of these journalists have denounced as simply as being overly partisan. Amaral's speech was a lot more humble and focused on the party's goals moving forward, highlighting the necessity of cooperation with other parties, a respect for cultural differences, and a beer with a strong moral framework were built upon the social doctrine of the Catholicism. Better than nothing. That makes no sense. I think I ran into the same problem before, too. Um, that's a bunch of crap. What do you mean? They, we should have won with a liberal. Oh, you are. Liberals. You are. I went frog it last time. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to go on the events and make sure we get the right party that should win. So instead of Fraga winning, we've got the Union Republicana secures victory. Capitalizing on mobilization of the urban regional's votes, Union Republicana's managed to secure victory in the election and all throughout the urban centers of Iberia, cheers can be heard of the possibility of a liberal Iberia may finally come to fruition. That being said, the loudest cheers of all can be heard from the party headquarters on General Martinez Campos Street along with the popping of champagne as officials who worked so hard to ascertain this victory can now have briefly relaxed. Both the party president, Fernandez Miranda, and the general secretary, Sa Carnero, have uh, prepared speeches for this victory and have gathered crowds in Madrid's plaza mayor to lay out their plans for Iberia in the coming years. Fernandez Miranda's speech focused on how important these next few years will be in ensuring that Iberian democracy does not backslide into their authoritarian past and his, that determination, his determination, to make sure this has only grown stronger due to the historic victory. Some journalists have suggested that the wording of the speech suggests that he intended to resign once his objective is done, but there has been no official statement on the matter after Fernandez Miranda was done. Secarinero took the stage and took a more policy-based approach in his speech, calling for three E's to be implemented. Establecer, expandir e eliminar, establishment of a provisional autonomy system, expanding civil rights, and elimination of the ghosts of the caudillos that haunt our beer's political system. In addition, Sa Canero went on to detail the government's plans to codify and expand the personal freedoms of the average Iberian in accordance with the freedoms that lay out in the Holy Bible. No! Ooh. The UR will have to deal with the military's hostility as they attempt to implement their reforms. All right, all right, over and up, not bad. Greatly increase the military's hostility towards the government. Oh, this guy, he kind of looks like an elf. So even about him, please go right ahead, so. We're still relatively stable. So, the Union Republicana's victory. With the victory of the Union Republicana in the first congressional elections, the people of Iberia have stated their desire to see an end to the oppressive backward state of the nation imposed upon them by the Cadillos. We take this gesture to the trust of heart, and we'll do our utmost to build a free, fair, and just society for all Iberians, regardless of the nationhood, creed, and color. I'm ready to help reform the economy because, my God, we're, we need we need money. Stability is fine. Um, on the place our state, our place on the world stage. 
Ooh. Side of the old fan under the shadow of the hegemon. Well, obviously we can't do that one, so... Spanish Atlantic trade would be pretty nice. Import modern designs. American military advice would be nice. Invest in Latin America. Visit Washington. Uh, attract industrial investors the next step. Mediterranean detente. Reviving regional trade. A trip to Rome. Being in Ankara. Share military designs and propose free trade movement. Or free movement. Oh, that's interesting. Ending the regime's laws. Legalize the opposition. Audit the prisons. Close down Tarafal. We can be better. Investigate military corruption. Objective education. Find who we can trust. Defense of democracy. Investigate election fraud. All right. Extending the vote. Faith in the people. Stabilizing the country. New statutes of autonomy. Bulgarian unrest. Find what we're looking for. I guess we can stabilize the country first. So much for the police state. Unrest has gripped the country from the form of both terrorism and a general civil unrest for years on end. Now that the democracy has been restored, the old guard are up in arms too, attempting to strangle freedom in the crib and restore the autocracy. At least the other major parties in the sports have accepted the election results peacefully. Our first priorities must be to deploy the police in a responsible manner, make clear our aims to the rest of the working class, and make sure the military doesn't get any funny ideas. And in defense of democracy, Iberian democracy is young and fragile, while the police in Accentia so far have proven themselves trustworthy. We can rely solely on them to protect the systems of the government. Teasing problems are to be expected, and the rumors of election fraud have already reached us. Weeds in the garden are best stripped up before they can entwine the roots with, the, with their neighbors. The same approach must be applied to any miscreants and aspiring tyrants in our new administration. But I'm going to end the episode there, in which we are definitely struggling with the economy. Oh, this is not good. We're getting very close. I might do that, but we might not. But yeah, we're going to hit. We're going to hit bad things here. But at least we got... Even though we had these cons commands, we got the UR in power, which made no sense why we can't get them in power earlier, but there was some corruption going on. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. As uh, we'll probably end up trying to join the OFN under with Strom Thurmond and Dixicrat. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great tomorrow. Fernandez, Miranda, rest of your day.